everybody. Uh, so we're we're here with my friend Isaac. Hey, awesome, everybody. awesome to be with him today. And so we're gonna be having a, a good conversation, talking about things that God's done in his life. And so I'm, we're just gonna jump right in. Yeah, Isaac, it's sure. awesome to be here with you. Finally, you. It's nice. We've been talking about this for a long time. And so let's <clears throat> jump right in and talk about it. So okay. let's talk about your life. Okay. All right. So let's talk about when you met Jesus. Yeah. And then we'll kind of go back in time after that point. Okay. So how, how did you come into a relationship with God? And what was that like for you? Okay. Um, I, I think the year was around about 97, 98, around that, that two-year period before I... Uh, recommitted my life in 1999 um, so I was living in Sydney okay. and um, having always had a, a, a knowledge of God an understanding of God having been brought up in a Christian home okay. um, it, my world at the time was chaotic I had um, I was hopelessly addicted to drugs I had a heritage heroin habit. Oh, wow. I was working um, as a prostitute part-time. In Sydney? In Sydney. Wow. Yeah, in Sydney. And um, I had a partner as well um, that was kind of, but I was increasingly unhappy. Okay. Unhappy. In, in my heart of hearts, I knew that this was not the life. I wanted to live anymore. Right. I wanted. I knew I was better than this. You know. Wow. I, I knew I there was. I didn't want to be living under yes. the umbrella of uh, prostitution. Wow. Streetwalker. Yeah. That kind of thing. But but it was shameful. Right. I felt such great shame. I I I, I did what I did only because I probably knew nothing else. Wow. At the time, and and because. The addiction to having that income, whatever I wanted to right. get the income, um, was kind of all I had depended on. Okay. So yeah, uh, just just incidents were happening. I think I I really believe now that I'm saying God was talking to me. God was wooing me back. Yeah. To Him, I had um, dedicated my life to Him before, so it wasn't as though I had no idea about God. Yeah. But he was, I guess, increasingly invading yeah. my world. And whether I had liked it or not, like I, I would get home from working um, at night yeah. and not being able to sleep because um, I felt such shame and guilt for what had him and you know, what had happened that night, what yeah. I was doing and I would be continually, continually condemning myself for my lifestyle. Yeah. And knowing that it, I wanted it to end so badly. Yeah. But um, leaving it behind yeah. was really, really frightening. Yeah. Uh, because then I would, the, you know, the, the other option for me was to live a normal existence. Uh, yeah. Completely have a 360 degree turnaround and wow. I wasn't sure that I would be able to survive that. So I felt really trapped in transsexuality. Yeah. Trapped in I and and the way of escape seemed so minute and narrow yeah. that it almost seemed impossible. So you said mm -hmm. you, you felt trapped in transsexuality. Yeah. So because I, I know you and yeah. for everyone who's gonna be watching this, what what does that mean? Like, what, well, you're living that, as a woman? Or, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Trapped in transsexuality because it was the, um, it was um, the lifestyle that, that I had assigned to myself. Okay. You know? and, and the only way I could exist. But, it, but, but the thing that I thought would bring me happiness, right. the freedom to express myself, publicly openly um, became a prison cell wow do you know what I mean it, yeah, it became yeah. like is this really what you wanted this is what you asked for is this right. what you really want for? right but then I'd have this uh, continual 
uh, conflict inside my mind right. about, well, what's the other option? It's turning back into a man and I couldn't yeah. imagine anything worse. So, really? so yeah, oh, you know, because I, I never ever felt comfortable as a man. I never ever, my whole life I'd been uh, uh, mistaken for a girl. Wow. From a young, young age, you know. From really? A young, young age. People would think I was a girl, a little girl. Wow. Not a little boy. And, and, and that kind of affirmed, yeah. you know, my own uh, delusions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even as a child, you know. Yeah. Um, so I thought it would most, most be the most natural thing for me wow. to transition. So you, you said, so you, you got saved when you were in Sydney. Right, you yeah. got God. You felt like God was ca yeah. calling you back, and yeah. you were your life. You were addicted to heroin and drugs, yeah. and yeah. you were you know working as a prostitute in yeah. Sydney. How did you get to that point? Well, it it started way back in my teens in New Zealand. You know, so I, you because you grew up in New Zealand. Grew up in New Zealand, right? Came to Australia to change, you know, to, for a change in the nineties, but but ended up, you know back in that okay. same environment, only it was a lot worse. So, okay. You know, it's a lot worse. And so you grew up in New Zealand. I know you, you know, you've shared with me that you grew up in a Christian home. Yeah. So how do you go from growing up in a Christian home yeah. to moving to Sydney, getting addicted to drugs, yeah. prostitution? What's What was that journey like? Yeah, it was actually sort of like a progression. Once I decided that I would get, the, you know, the drag. I mean, the prostitution started when I was 15 years old in New Zealand. Wow, okay. Right? So, so um, I, 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 my dad, uh, my mum passed away when I was 12. And so um, my whole world kind of collapsed. In fact, the whole family unit just dispersed. Yeah. Because your mum was like your person. My mum was like... Um, uh, really a, a, a very fervent Christian woman. Wow. And so we grew up, uh, everything in the house was Christian, no idolatry, no wow. idol, no Māori um, symbols or anything like that. Wow. And for that reason, we were kind of like, in our community, um, misunderstood. Like, okay. Because we, I don't suppose it was, it was a rejection of, a, of Māori culture. Right. But it was just that my mother had been saved from a long, long line of, um, okay. you know, that magic kind of thing. Not that, wow. but, but okay. it was around. And, yeah. and she would say it was very, very real. And that when she got saved and my dad, yeah. they broke all of those wow. um, cultural curses yeah. that surrounded a lot of the people. I can't remember. And, and for that reason, she didn't want us to explore Okay. That cultural side of our lives. And because we lived in right. a community that was surrounded by Māori, right. we were like misunderstood or labelled as a whitewashed kind of thing. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Just generally so. Um, so you, were, you weren't Māori enough for the yeah, Māori. Yeah, yeah. And Māori not enough white to be enough Māori, for the white Christians or whoever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, kind yeah. of just in your own. Exactly. So bubble. there was okay. also a cultural identity. Right that I struggled with as well, along with a, okay. a sexual identity yeah. crisis. It was just confusion all around. So at what age did you start, you know, thinking, I'm a girl? Yeah. Well, um, really, really young. I mean, I, I remember having images of my two uh, elder sisters, a yeah. couple of years older than me. I, I don't even know that I was maybe five or six. And, and I remember them getting... Christmas presents, right? Yeah. And they both got a pair of white beetle boots, you know, okay. like white beetle boots. Wait, what's this was the 70s. What's a beetle? You got it. Yeah, um, beetle boots okay. are like the mod era in the 70s. Okay. You know, okay. Where the girls had the knee high right. boots with oh, heels. Oh, yeah, okay. With heels, Sorry, right? I'm, I'm 35. Yeah, right? that, yeah okay, I know. Okay. I know. So <laughs> they were called beetle boots. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, because the Beatles sort of, All right. that famous band, yeah. sort of, um, was setting the trend that, yeah. that mod fashion okay. was setting the trend at yeah. the time. So my two sisters got a pair of white beetle boots. Okay. And one of them had blue fur inside and the other one had pink fur inside. And I was just remember being so jealous. Wow. So jealous and wondering wondering where are my beetle boots? But I got a toy gun. 
Okay. I got a toy gun and I smashed it. Really? The moment I opened the box and saw a toy with a water pistol. Yeah. And I smashed it against the tank. Like I was really, really angry because I didn't get Wow. Water. You know, and, and and I you know, that was like for the first time in my life I, I had understood I like girls things, you know. I don't want boys. Yeah. And so that was kind of like my first right. understanding. Uh, my reaction to getting something that was um, wow. you know, meant for boys in those days. Yeah. That I rejected. So, so from so from a young age, you already felt that way. Already and, felt that way. And then you, yeah. you said that your mom, your mom passed away. Yeah. yeah. And then what happened there? Okay. So my mom passed away. Uh, we left the country where I was born and we moved to the city. Uh, um, and that's where my mum passed away. Right. We stayed there for a little while. My dad, um, my dad, soon after, he was never around for a lot. Okay. So I had a bit of an absent father. Okay. And when he was home, uh, there was always a lot of conflict. He was a very angry man, a very okay. violent man. He never laid a hand on my mother like he wasn't a woman beater. Right. But um, he was very menacing, very menacing, okay. very angry person. He would punch holes in the wall and okay. just with my mum's head. Right. And my mum was never afraid of him. Okay. Very brave. And um, uh, so so I, I understand now there was a lot of rejection from my father um, okay. towards not just me, but all of my kids, but particularly right. me. Uh, right. So, um, yeah, we moved to the city. Uh, mm. My dad immediately was on the hunt for another wife. Um, that he was saying um, would take care of us. Yeah. And at that point, I had kind of cut off my uh, connection with my father. Okay. And started to plan my own life and my own world, you know. So, so it was that. That was then. Um, we, my dad remarried again, a, uh, a, a white woman yeah. from New Zealand. She was a, a born again Christian and wonderful, wonderful. Um, stepmom that became my stepmother for about 30 years but I was probably a year and a half after my mother died um, my dad kicked me out of home so I was in my I think it's year nine year nine okay um, of college and my uh, grades started dropping and my English teacher asked me why are your grades dropping what's going on and so I told her my dad is there so I'm not going to finish school. I'm going to leave wow. as soon as I turn 15. And um, so she was really upset about that. But but I don't understand why she was crying. She just said, you know, you've got so much done and you're a smart boy. But it's yeah. such a shame that I see a lot of indigenous kids, not like myself, yeah. not getting the encouragement they need to uh, go on to, right. to a better education later yeah. in life. So, but but for me, I had already decided. Well, I can't wait to get away from my dad, as well. So I think it was December the fifteenth, nineteen uh, eighty. Okay. That my dad put me on the bus, twenty dollar, and said, "Okay, you're going. Just leave. Have a good life." And he he, wow. he didn't even let my younger brother and sister come to the bus stop to see me. And I never cried, but I'm fifteen years old. I over my hand, I've got twenty dollars on my hand, and I think, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Why? But I, I wasn't. But I just want, you know. I watched as the bus went past his car, and I just said, wow, my whole life is about to change. So it was a few months after that um, that I met up with transsexual. One. So a few months after that, that's when you met. Yeah. 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 A transsexual that I had met when I was 12 years old and oh, um, wow. um, and um, met up with, with her and the whole community and she introduced me to, um, it was kind of like a hierarchy in the transsexual world. Okay. Um, so there were uh, queens that were around in the 60s and 70s, okay. you know, um, um, that worked as strippers, that worked as prostitutes, that worked, you know, in the city underbelly right. of Wellington. Okay. So I was introduced to all of them. Wow. <laughs> and um, 
Christ because I was young and fresh and hairless and uh, okay. I would make, you know, a great looking girl and I was like, sort of wanted to groom me to become this uh, wow. beauty queen. Right? And you, you were a beauty queen at one point, right? Can you tell me about that? I've seen the picture, and with your permission, we might show it on the video in an overlay, but how did, how did you become a beauty queen? Well, well, you know, um, I didn't realize, I, I didn't realize at the time, but once you, you know, you, you, you stake out your territory, right? You see all these other transsexuals around you, and, and you realize, okay, I'm young. I'm pretty, um, and right. then that kind of vanity takes over, okay. and then you learn different ways to present yourself. You learn about how to act, what to do, and how to put your makeup on properly. Okay. And I was always um, interested in makeup. I was always interested in in application. Right. And so I honed my skill about that, and I become I became quite renowned for being a very good at putting on my makeup. Wow. And so, so it sort of started from there. Um, a, a gay entertainer came to town um, by the name of Joe Vangius. Okay. And Wellington was renowned for having pretty, pretty transsexuals, you know. Like, the word for it was unspring, right? Okay. Where you can't tell that they're really men. All right. Like, Never knew. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's good unspring. That you, you, and, and so it was renowned for having the most beautiful transsexuals in New Zealand, right? So, um, and and so I'd become the new, you know, puppet. My, my best friend did I. Wow. Uh, she was very good, very, very good, Corrine. And um, so we we uh, entered this transsexual competition, right? And it was televised and everything in Wellington, 1982. And I was only 17 and my friend was 19. And so we took out the title. We, we took out the title. And there was another one who was about maybe 23, 24 at the time. And she won the seniority ribbon. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it was quite a big deal. Um, but I think I, I entered into um, that lifestyle at, at the very beginning of the LGBT wow, yeah. movement. Even though it wasn't even taught that at the time. But it was yeah. the origins of, yeah. um, you know... Um, homosexual um, legalize, legalization, right? Which was legalized in 1986 in New Zealand. In New Zealand, okay. Yeah, and it's a big march, some protests, and all that thing. And so, yeah, and, and so we won this competition, and we got a bit of notoriety, and we did a few um, quite a few modeling jobs, photo right. shoots for designers in the in the city, and everything like that. But I think they were wanting us to be that. Um, um, pillars of, right okay you know part of the of movement. that community yeah okay yeah, yeah okay but we never ever felt that we were right because um homosexuals lesbians it was just like um gay and lesbian at the time right transsexuals were always on the outer of the community okay and i and i think it was because of the lifestyle that we lived we were kind of like twilight people we only sort of came out at night and okay worked and you know, okay. made our money in the red light districts. We didn't really venture very far okay. out from there, so we weren't sort of active in the um, workforce. You know right. I mean? Okay. So, like a lot of gays and lesbians were quite just kind of happy to fit into normal society. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. And work in different jobs and things. You like guys that. are kind of like yeah, we were sort of isolated. Yeah. Okay. On our own, and and um, and you know, the labels attached were they'll never be anything more than prostitutes okay yeah and it was wow. kind of true in a while because if, if, if you did work as it was very very hard like it was hard to get a job okay like a normal straight job as a transsexual because you are automatically labeled as uh you know um unemployable right random you know right unstable kind okay of, yeah so how did you start transition because we, we talked about because yeah. you know a lot of people uh, still trying to I th even myself I'm learning a, a lot right with the difference between you know some guys would just dress up 
yeah and and dress up as a woman yeah. versus actually trying to become a woman yeah and when did you start the process of actually transitioning yeah i was maybe 14 years old 14 yeah okay. i start I, I had been experimenting since i was around about 12. okay but secretly you right. know secretly i would get home from school yeah and um the sister that was two years older than me had left home had left her girl's uniform in the wardrobe right. and i would put that on and lock the doors and do my homework okay <laughs> and my hair was going longer okay i started to to pluck my eyebrows and things like that and boys were starting to ask me things i'd deny it of course right uh, but you know it, increasingly this um this this uh, manifestation this emulation of femininity was right. becoming more and more evident yeah um so yeah uh, um i think 14 when i got to wellington and i asked if i could i just want to be a girl so i met a lot of the older yeah transsexuals and they advised me to get on hormones as soon as possible okay um because um i had no hair on my face you know I, I i still looked feminine right but if you start on these now throughout your whole life yeah. as a Chinese you will never have a beard okay you will never have a and beard. that was that was exactly, like the, you didn't the, want a the, beard, the right? ultimate okay. curse for a transsexual was to you know have oh, a beard okay so hormones um killed off all of that so you started so, hormones of 14 15 uh, 15 yeah 15. 15 I was advised to go to my doctor and uh, you couldn't legally get until oh. you were 18. Okay, okay. So I didn't lie about my age. Wow. So I lied about my age. I don't know if the doctor was convinced, but he just said to me, this is a very life-changing drug. He was very good. He walked me through, okay. um, you know, the complications that they could cause for me later on in life. Right. Um, but of course, I was adamant. I'd just give them to me. Yeah. So he started me on a lower dose. And then um, as the year progressed, the, the dose got more and more. I would check in with him. He would see how they were going. But wow. Yeah. I just began to start feeling weak. Okay. You know, that was the very first sensation. And then my, my, my chest, of course, started to develop. So just, I mean, I was about to say naturally, but from the hormones, yeah. how, how, did, how does that work? Or how did that work? Yeah. So it, everything softens, like it softens your body. Okay. Um, you take on a new sort of shape. I started to develop, you know, Woman hit really, really, wow. they're amazing jobs, you know. And your hair just goes soft and silky, um, your face softens, okay. You know? Um, no hair on your body, okay, and you just look like a girl, wow, like a just natural girl, even, so, even, even without any makeup on. People would prefer that you look better with no makeup on. So, you did so, your um transition was it surgical not not uh, oh okay it was natural all well of, induced with by the hormones um, estrogen. and everything yeah okay estrogen. yeah so and that's how wow. most transsexuals start right yeah and then so you went through this process and of course again come, you came from a, a christian home and life happens and you start this journey and then in wellington you you start you started the lifestyle of you know prostitution and what made you start drugs like what what got you hooked on drugs in the first place yeah 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 i think after my first incident my very first client that okay i was encouraged to hop into his car um, um i was very nervous i'd never you know had any any sexual encounters before in my whole entire life so I was wow okay i didn't know why they were asking me to get into his car or what would be expected of me. Uh, very, very green, very naive. So um, I was kind of encouraged, pushed into this car with this client that was a regular for a lot of other girls and he'd been around a while. Okay. And um, so that incident when he took me back to his place and looking back on it, I, I was totally violated, totally violated to the point that I, I, I threw up. I really? threw up. And, but, you know, and after that incident, he took me back to the corner where we would stand and work. And, um, you know, I, I, I spoke to the colleague, oh, to my fellow trainee that we're yeah. 
encouraging me this is what you need to do you need to start contributing to the running of the household so forth because you, you all live together we did yeah. okay yeah there was about maybe six or seven of us in the okay. one, one, one two bedroom okay uh, house chemistry. so you had to basically earn your keep earn yeah, your spot okay. yeah 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 I mean the rent had to be paid yeah so what happened after that? Um, I, 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 I guess I just was very open and honest, and I told them I feel dirty. Why? Because I did. I just felt yeah. so dirty. Like um, I don't know. I'd never had felt that experience, but I felt dirty. Dirty. I felt violated. I felt like what just happened. But right. You know, it was enjoyable, and right. um, and they kind of laughed. They laughed. They it laughed. All. They laughed it all. And I was shocked that they laughed it off. I said, you're supposed to be my friends. You're supposed to be my, my sisters, you know, yeah. you know uh, to, to help me along this way. But, but they laughed. And then they handed me, um, uh, you know, these drugs, pills. Pills yeah. that were right into prescription medicine. At right. The time they it. But strong. Okay. Sedatives. Um, um, take these. And I couldn't believe how quickly they worked. Like, I just automatically relaxed and felt like what had just happened to me wasn't that bad wow yeah so it's just a mind-altering thing and and maybe within the first year i was addicted to them wow I, I knew then okay this is my sort of life sentence this is it this is what i've been this is who I am. yeah yeah I, I don't know that i was happy about that right now i thought i i thought there would be much more but I realized at that point this is it this is this is going to be my life so you on it. so you you started your first you know encounter with a client as a yeah. prostitute was to pay rent and contribute yeah. and then you started drugs yeah. to be able to continue doing that to kind of what was it like numbing to, yeah yeah now, wow yeah and that just cycle just kept yeah, going yeah, on yeah, yeah. so how year long after, did year that year. how long was that were, for, for as long as I um, remained in that wow. industry. In that yeah. So when was the moment that you felt, because earlier you said that phrase, you felt God, um, uh, you know, speaking to you again. Yeah. Or yeah. I, yeah. I forgot how, exactly how you said it, but yeah. what, what was that moment, if you can remember, yeah. that you felt either aware or... Yeah, yeah. What was I, I think... There were many, many, um, many moments, okay. if I can say that. Yeah, yeah. Like, there were nights that I'd be walking around the street with my best friend who, God bless her, she, you know, she ended up hanging herself in a police cell. That oh. broke my heart. But yeah. we were very, very close. She was my closest friend. And, you know, that's another person that I will always um, bring tears to my yeah. eyes because my good friend yeah. took her own life. Oh, my um, gosh. But there were moments that would walk around and I would tell her, um, you know, I would ask her really deep questions. Like I said, why, why do we do this? And why are we doing this? And she'd get upset and go, why do you always have to think so much about what we're really? doing? Just do it. But I think, you know, you get too much, you get too involved in yeah. the whys and the hows and, um, of, of life. You, you, this is just it. Right. Yeah, she had resigned herself to being that this is all we're ever going to be. It's and you we're, were asking questions. Of I meaning. was asking questions, and I was saying, don't you ever think about it? You know, when we get home from work at night, I would lie in bed, not being able to sleep. Just, really? just you know, going over things like, I don't want to do this. Is, is this all I'm good for? Wow. I, like, I felt like I had become the object of a man's desire, and that's not... Yeah, what I wanted, and and I was guess I was looking for love, but everybody that uh, wanted to have a relationship with me, right? It was all about objectifying me. Wow, you know, and I felt like, well, you're just going to use me as an object yourself, and so there wow. was all of that um, turmoil going on in my life. And so. This this was in Sydney already. This within, this started in Wellington, but it and then moved to off. Sydney. And Sydney was another level. Another level. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean that the scene was a lot more intense. Okay. The scene was very, very um, dangerous. Right. You know, like the, the New Zealand clientele were a lot 
more um, conservative in okay. the state or in the sense. Okay. But uh, Australia yeah. are animals. Well, Kiwis are a lot more uh, yeah. chill, I think, in general. Yeah. 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 But the, the Australian kind of just animals, very, very, um, what do you call it? Hmm. Depraved. Wow. A lot of fantasy and act reenactments, okay. a lot of, you know, uh, crazy, wow. crazy stuff. So, how did you find yourself walk from, you're walking the streets at night, you're working, when did you find yourself walking back into a church, or what, what when did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I had been in a relationship uh, okay. with an Australian boy, um, uh, and you know, very loved him, loved him very, very much. This is so at the same time. At the same time. Wow. So he allowed that. He allowed okay. me to continue with that, you know, occasionally. Um, he he had come from a uh, disturbed background himself. So okay. He, you know, um, he has dysfunctional background. Okay. Uh, he was a jockey as well. So okay. And so, um, so he allowed that so that we could. You know, I have steady income coming in, so, so okay, well, right, okay. Um, but I started to talk to him about uh, my deep convictions. Wow. And um, and I, you know, I it got to the point just before I went back to church. I said I need to go to church, and he took me. That's amazing. He took me. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a miracle right there. It is, yeah. Because I mean most people would think like, what do you mean? Yeah. You need to go to church, you're crazy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean he was a he was a, otherwise a quite a deep thinker himself and an intelligent boy and okay. he kind of understood I was having all these conflicts and all he wanted to do was to make me happy. Wow. Right? So so he took me there, he saw me right up through that whole period before I went to uh drug rehabilitation, Christian training. So you you started having these questions and, and your your bo- boyfriend? We, we, yeah. We okay. Boyfriend. So your boyfriend at the time said yes and you, you went to church together. Yeah. Then what ha- what was that like? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, there was a church that I was familiar with. My best, well, you know, one of, one of the girls that I had met, my sister in Sydney had okay. been saved, right? Your, when you say sister, yeah. your actual sister. My actual sister. Okay, all right. I just made sure yeah. I'm yeah. understanding. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had um, um, been introduced to the church okay. when I arrived. And then I sort of went back right. to my own world. That was too much for me. Right. Anyway, so I went back to that church. I went back to that church. Um, wow. And, um, yeah, it was a little bit weird. It was yeah. a little bit weird. But um, I just knew I needed to go. Um, you just yeah, yeah. coffee. <laughs> there we go. For you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank you. it. Yeah. So you started. So you went back to this church. What was the name of the church? It was Shiloh Christian Center. Shiloh. Yeah. Okay. That's in Shiloh Sydney. That's in Sydney. It is and, it, and it was a Kiwi based. It, it's no longer there. Okay. No, okay. no longer there. But it was a, it, it was a um, predominantly Kiwi dominated mm. church. And lots of Maori. Okay. Yeah, Pakeha there. Okay. Yeah. How did you decide to go? Because I, uh, for anyone who is watching and doesn't know what this is, Teen Challenge, because we'll talk about yeah. it in a second, mm-hmm. is a. Uh, could you explain what Teen Challenge is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when, when, when the pastor of the church started walking me through, I, I, you know, my heroin addiction was just escalating. Wow. Okay. Because I, I knew I. I I, I don't know, maybe it was the you know, burger trick of the enemy wow. trying to stop me from the inevitable, yeah. giving my life back to Christ. So I'd be getting high on heroin and then going to church on Sunday. Wow. Getting high from Wednesday to Sunday. So I was kind of in and out, in and out, up and down. Um, then one night it was like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you need to go to rehab, you know. But during that time that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I need to go to rehab. It was also that you need to end this relationship. Right. Yeah. And perhaps that's why my heroin addiction was escalated. It's like, oh, this okay. is too much for me. I, right. I've got to give up this partner if I want to continue, yeah. you know, 
can't walking with the Lord. Yeah. I've got to give up my addiction. I've got to give up the way I dress, the way I present myself. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of like all coming to the third. That's a lot all at once. <laughs> I can't I can't even imagine. I would have wished it on anybody. You know, oh yeah. as you're talking, I wanna just kinda of bring this up and I, I might not be able to ask it exactly in a perfect way, but yeah. You know, you were in this relationship with a guy for yeah. I, I don't know. I had been. Um, I was kind of at that point from one to another. Do you know okay. what I mean? Like I had. Well, you're the boyfriend at that time. Yeah, yeah. How long yeah. were you guys together? We were together, maybe a couple of years. And because, you know, in other conversations, yeah, you, you, you I, I remember you telling me like you had genuine love for this man, I and yeah, I, it's so interesting, and I, I don't, I don't know exactly how to unwrap it with, <laughs> verbally, but you know. You had to end that relationship. Yeah. You knew it in your heart, and it, but you you still love that man. Yeah. But you knew that God was bringing you somewhere else. Yeah. What is, if I could ask, what's that like? Knowing that you have genuine love, it's not like Jesus was telling you now you have to hate this person. Yeah. Or, or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm calling you. No, no longer care about this guy, but you had love for this person. I do. I, I loved him because he was the first boyfriend that I'd had. Wow. That didn't expect anything of me. Wow. That 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 um, kind of understood. Okay. Me psychologically. Yeah. Kind of um, emphasized with my um, thoughts and and um, my convictions. Right. And respected that. And wow. never ever tried to force his okay. ideals or opinions on me, but was there kind of just to hear me out. Wow. Listen to me and not tell me I was crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I loved him. You know, I loved him. Yeah. Because of his acceptance of me. And that's all I really wanted. I didn't want somebody to love me just for the way I looked. Right. For what I could do for them. Wow. Yeah. So, so then... What was it like going from that with everything that your life had become yeah. and then stepping into Teen Challenge? Yeah, yeah. What was that? Yeah, well, well. so eventually I asked about a good friend from church. I laid it out open to them. We were kind of having Bible um, okay. studies midweek yeah. with this daughter of the pastor. She would come and spend time and, and sort of walk us through new discipleship classes and so forth and so I got to a point when I just said you know I know I need to, to change my life I just don't know how to do it but wow. God has spoke to me about um, parting with my partner and perhaps entering rehab but I'm so afraid and if you can <laughs> if you can maybe help me ask your dad to help me wow so we had a few um, sessions with the pastor yeah my boyfriend and Okay. And I talked through what I was feeling yeah. about, um, you know, this next stage of my life. We spent a year wavering, you know what I mean, up, in and out, up and down in the yeah. church. And I was just feeling challenged to uh, make a real solid commitment to my faith journey. Wow. And it was really scaring me. So. What was... What was rehab like? I know we were kind of, I was asking you questions last night and, yeah. and everything when we were hanging out. And what was it like? Because I, I know you detransitioned yeah. in rehab and you were also yeah. getting off of drugs. Yeah. What was that experience it like? Was, it was really, really scary. I think the night before we left to drive 12 hours yeah. to Victoria. A really remote place in Victoria, a, a, a Teen Challenge. Um, they were the only ones that would take me. Like, like okay. they decided to take me. They knew my, my the pastor had set it all up and said, okay. "Listen, um, I've got in touch with a Christian-based drug rehabilitation center. He gave me the history of it. Nikki Cruz had established right. it, um, and he said, would you consider going to this?'" rehabilitation wow. center but you have you'll be removed from society completely yeah and i battled with that for a few months and right I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is too much. but in that time that i was warring with yay or nay yeah i go um my 
partner and I, we stopped sleeping in the same bed together. So he moved into the lounge and I moved into Really? The yeah, and I moved into the bedroom and we, you know, my darling kind of thing from a, from a distance. Really? But wow. there was that separation. Wow. Physical separation. Like little by little. Yeah, and little by little. It was a gradual thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, but he was totally okay. He's just supported me right up until the day that I that I left. And the night that I left, um, I had no no men's clothes. Ever. So so I and I knew that what was ahead of me, I would have to transition into Wow. You know, I mean there was no way about it. I was kind of coming to terms with that. Yeah. How it would work out. So my friend's husband gave me some male clothes. Just so really? that I could just so that I could appear. Yeah. Friend from church. Or yeah, a guy from church. So he just gave you some he guy gave clothes. He gave me said, Oh, here's a shirt and here's a pair of baggy or blue eyes. So I think I was very thin at the time. I had long hair. Right. And um so I just tied my hair up in a ponytail and we were off. And um it was a ten hour drive and I fell asleep in the car. They stopped about a kilometre from the um, centre and my friend said to me, I, we are um, we are here, we're a kilometre away. Um, do you want to have your last cigarette? Because no cigarette, no anything like that. Yeah. Your whole life completely changes the moment you get onto that property. Wow. That's very, very extreme. <laughs> wow. So I had my last cigarette and, I, and she said, look, I just want to say to you, um, um, I just want to say, if you have a change of heart right now, um, we'll turn around and we'll go right back. We'll drive all the way back to wow. the city. You don't have so to So it go. was your choice. Yeah, it it was wasn't your like, you it better get yeah, your butt in, get there. in there. now. And, right, okay. You know, cut that hill. Yeah, cut yeah. It. it wasn't like that at Put all. Put yourself up. I'm going to give you a choice. Yeah, wow. That's a great, yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Um, but once you get behind those doors, that's really, that's it. Wow. And, and so I had my last cigarette. And I said, okay, okay, okay. I took a deep breath. Yeah. And I said, just, just drive me there. Just go. So they drove me there. They dropped me in the car park and right. then staff came out. They were expecting me. Yeah. And then when I got to this property, it was an old fruit farm, fruit picking. Right, yeah. You know, center. It had been converted into this gene challenge program. Wow. And I saw all of these boys these rough edge boys sort of sitting around on the veranda. They obviously knew it's a transit for coming in. Yeah. Uh, I'm the first ever to have entered into it. One really? Of the, yeah. That's so ever, all the other guys in the rehab, yeah. what were they like? Like They were, you know, I don't know. They just seemed to be in a frenzy. I don't know. It was just okay. really weird. I'd never, but they were all recovering from their own addictions as okay. well. So they were broken boys to okay. start with, you know. Um, so I was in amongst about 37 of them. Wow. Yeah. Man. There was a women's program as well, but that was sort of across the paddock. Yeah. And they were kept separately. Right. I was much smaller. Right. Than you and I got put in with all the men. It was very disconcerting. Talk about being out of your comfort zone. And... Oh, completely. So I asked you this last night when we were having dinner. I want to ask you again. What was, what did it feel like? Because I, you know, it's so, especially today, in, in culture and in society, everything, you know, transitioning and uh, what's the term? Uh, life affirming care, yeah. or I, I, you know, there's so many terms that are now becoming mainstream. Yeah. But we rarely hear of what it's like, the truth, if someone wants to de transition yeah. or live as a man again or live as a woman again. It, yeah. What was it like to de transition? Yeah. It was. It was hell. It was really, yeah. really, really hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. what? What uh, were the? What was it like going through those changes? Like, what? What did you actually go through? I I, I had stopped my hormone treatment. Right. I stopped my. I still had breasts, and um, I just dragged myself down every day. So, wow. Um, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know the boys for broken. And, right. and, and I think that had sorted past and stuff like that. You just never know who you're surrounded mm. with. So mm -hmm. I wanted to protect them as much as I wanted to protect myself. Okay. Um, so so it came more about uh, disguising, you know, my, my feminine tendencies wearing baggy clothes. Wow. I had my hair shaped maybe 
I, uh, a few weeks into the program. You I, shaved your head? I, yeah. Wow. Well, well, well I, uh, one of the girls from the women's program. Okay. Um, and it's lesbian, actually. Yeah. She, she shaved my hair for me. Wow. Oh. Um, and, and, and then it was like, that was like a, she said to me, your hair didn't want to come off. She said it was really hard. Really? Yeah. To get that hair off of you. Wow. It was like, yeah. But, but once it was bought, um, I felt like, okay, okay. This, wow. I, got, I kind of had to take steps into, you know, my new affirmed manhood. Yeah. Just gradually and not try to overthink right. the consequences of that. Although they were, and I just had to right. just roll with it. And so, go through. so you, after rehab, yeah, what did you do? Okay, so so I I stayed for the whole fifteen months. Fifteen months. Yeah. Wow. The, the That's whole a program is twelve months. Okay. Right? And then after twelve months, you graduate. I never used. It was like being in a sort of a prison. Your okay. whole life is um, from 6 a.m. till 9 at night. Wow. Audit, you know, and I was chapel, you know, work duties at 6 a.m. Right. Um, you know, I had to do things I'd never done before. I had to weed gardens and feed pigs and really milk cows, and I was just really bad. But a, a lot of the things that we were doing, I didn't realize that there were actually tools to built me in some way really you know, absolutely I, mean, I, I remember crying because I had calluses on my hands and I wasn't happy about that and, yeah. and you know having the boys laugh at me and, and um, having them jive at me about when, when, when Mardi Gras rolled around oh I said must be upset because no one's sitting at Mardi Gras you know right. just putting up with so much yeah. rubbish from, from the boys but yeah. having ended up becoming really good friends with them because they knew that I was serious about my recovery. Yeah. I wasn't there to tempt anybody. Yeah. I wasn't there to uh, improve on their yeah. personal lives or spaces. Yeah. So I earned a bit of respect in that whole year. Wow. And became a senior student. Um, and then I was allowed off the property. You know, do my own thing with that. Okay. Um, and then um, they approached me to be an online staff member for the last three months. If you become an online staff member, it's a three-month program where you get a lot of freedom. You get um, your own cabin. You get your own okay. cabin. Uh, you don't have to attend to all that duty, but you will be required to. So I began to work in the kitchen wow. and cook for three months, and it was a, it was sort of like a preparation for coming out of there. Okay. So while I was in that three-month final graduation before my full graduation, the Lord spoke to me about going to Bible college. And I'm like, no, God, no. I'm, you know, I, 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 I'd been kicked out of home at yeah. 14. Yeah. I never got to finish my um, education yeah. at all. But it was just so strong on me. Wow. This was the next step for you. Yeah. That I applied. Yeah. I sent an application. One of the counsellors sort of helped me do it. And they said, well, okay, I was like, you know. I didn't know whether I'd be accepted or not yeah. because um, you had to sort of state your level of education, that kind of thing. Right. Higher education, that kind of thing. There was a little bit of a criteria before yeah. you got accepted. I just did it. And I just told them, look, this is who I am. I'm in a rehabilitation centre. They accepted me. Wow. They accepted me. And I, I, I finished um, I finished the... Um, full program in January of 2001 wow. and I oh, sorry December of 2001 yeah. 15 months after I entered, I entered and I started really canny I, I I started Bible College on my 35th birthday 36 orientation day wow <laughs> really yeah really I but I I was assessed by the academic by the faculty to see if I was um, intelligent enough to handle the work. Right, right. So I had to do a mini assessment to get into this college. And they said, well, what we'll do is we'll start you on an advanced diploma stream and just see how you go. Okay. After six months, we can look at your uh, assignments and so forth. Right. And then we can forward you to do a degree stream. 
Wow. So, so um, I, after six months, they approached me and said, we think you can handle the degree yeah. strength. Your grades are quite good. Your writing is quite good. Wow. So, um, uh, move you up to the degree strength. So I stayed there for the next year. So what did, what, what did you graduate? Because you, you finished the course? I did. The grades? I, I did. And what, what did you graduate with? I graduated at Sydney College of Divinity with a bachelor's degree of theology. Bachelor's degree of theology. Yeah. I think, like, just hearing you say that is just so amazing, <laughs> right? Because, I mean, most people that even had a fraction of the life that you've had, people would assume, like, that's it. Yeah. That's all. And I'm, I don't, maybe, uh, or I'm going to assume you felt that way yeah. a bunch of times, too. And you, not only going through something as hard as rehab, detransitioning, and then from there you jump right in. Yeah. And you go to Bible college and you get an, a bachelor's in uh, the, theology. You know, it's it's so amazing. And I wanted to, from that, I wanted to, you know, ask this because lo- hearing about your life, your story, everything that you've been through. And, you know, with ever, anyone that's going to be watching this, like, how would you, or what, sorry, what would you say to someone who's either watching this right now and they're either openly gay, trans, addicted to drugs, what, whatever their life might look like right now. Cause it's not like being gay is the only, you know, li- life out there, but yeah. whatever they're going through, they look at you and go, wow, that's amazing. I respect it. Good for you. You, you got off drugs and all of that. You got your education and maybe someone's watching this and thinking that's amazing. I respect what you've done, but I don't think that's possible for me yeah. to do. You know, you, you found God or you found him again or he found you, however you would phrase it. That's good for you. I just don't think that's possible for me. I'm either too far gone or I just can't imagine not living this, you know, as, as a trans person. I can't, I, I just don't see it. Yeah. What, what would you say to that person? Right. I would just be honest and say, I didn't see it either. Okay. I didn't see it either. I, it was impossible. No. But I think if a person who was in the gay community and was having the conflicts that I had, mm. conflicts of desire, conflicts uh, within your mind, within your spirit, within your soul, right. um, if you are serious about God, yeah, he will get serious about you. Yeah. And um, it is not, not an easy road. Right. Not an easy road. I, I, I spoke to one of my counselors before I left. She said, you know, I really admire you. You are the first transsexual to ever finish the Teen Challenge program. So one in 20 students actually complete this program. Wow. One in 20. It has a one in 20 success rate. And wow. we get hundreds of boys and girls through this program every year. Wow. Only one of them. One in 20 makes it. Yeah. So you should be, you know, commend yourself. But I never thought that... I saw it as um, my sentence, so to speak, okay. to, by God, to see if I would be faithful, yeah. even in that really tumultuous time yeah. of my life. So I would say it's not an easy path to take. It's right. a narrow path. But um, if you stick at it, if you, if you trust God, if you allow him to strip you bare, right. it, you, know, you will not regret it. Yeah. But it, it's not easy. Yeah. And you have to get to that point where you are ready to completely forsake your yeah. past, everything about it. So, since you just said that, because you, you just went right into the next question I was going to ask yeah. is, your whole life, or first half of your life, I'll say, especially even as a young kid, you you saw yourself as a little girl. Yeah. How, how do you see yourself now? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I still struggle with the image of, I affirm yeah. myself as right. a male. Right. I, 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 I acknowledge I still have effeminate histories, but I remember yeah. a, a, a really, um, a, 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 a speaker, he's now passed away, his name is Cy. I love Cy. Uh, yeah. He really helped me through yeah. those years of hardship. I went to see about three or four of his conferences. Really? Way back in the yeah. 90s. I was just so 
enamored by him because yes. he was really strict on himself and he kind of he kind of said that the residue of his past may be evident until the day the Lord comes to yes. take him home. Yeah. I've had to accept that for myself. Yeah. You know. And if and if people are going to um judge me on that, yeah. That's fine. As right. long as he knew who he was in right. Christ. And I feel like as long as I know who I am in Christ, yeah. What anybody else has to say, Christian, even Christian, non Christian, yeah, well, it's goes, easy to judge, right? Uh, yeah, it's easy to, well, you're uh, not butch enough, God hasn't right, done enough right, in yeah, your yeah, life, I, right? I mean, <laughs> through, through my years at Teen Challenge, I'd have you know comments held at me. I used to, you've got to start trying to walk like a man, and I'd never know what the difference is. That? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you kind of swish, you kind of swish when you walk in a fight, right? Oh, sure, you know, yeah. I've got better things to deal with than the yeah. way I walk, you know. Right. It's a matter of my heart. That, right. It needs to change. Yeah. My mind needs to change. My well, I, re- I remember I I heard Cy. I'm happy you brought him up, Cy yeah. Rogers. Yeah. And anyone who's watching this would definitely encourage you to go watch yeah. as many Cy Rogers messages uh, as you can. Phenomenal. I heard him. He preached when I was in Bible college in Sydney. Okay. And then we actually, uh, I, I got connected with him online and we were we were actually trying to get him to come here okay and we actually had correspondence and then he passed away yeah and, yeah. and everything but i mean he got married he had a kid a child. and he uh, and you would if you didn't know who Cy was yeah. if you met him on the street yeah you would assume he was gay absolutely right i mean yeah. he was still effeminate yeah. i mean not as much as before but yeah. it's easy to judge someone based on what you see right now, yeah. if you have no idea what God has done yeah. in their past, and I think yeah. that goes for every, any kind of journey. Absolutely, or, yeah. 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 I also had to understand, I put myself in another, another person's shoes because right. as much as I would be uh, looked and frowned upon by you know, a church that I was attending yeah. or, or somebody, um, I had to understand, you know, it was always like the little assessment, you do the same thing. Really? Absolutely. What? Like how? Like, what, what well, you, you know, like if somebody were to assert, oh, look at his mannerism, I would do the same. You know? Really? Oh, look, that one needs to go on a diet. That kind of thing. <laughs> you know, you... Absolutely. Right. And so it was always back on me. Right. When I, whenever I, I was like, look what they're doing. We're all hypocrites, we are. <laughs> yeah, we're all hypocrites. Yeah. We all criticise each other. We all have our yeah. judgmental attitude. Absolutely. And so I... I learned not to take that on board, not to be so offended if my brother was yeah. upset that I was, uh, you know, right. still a little bit limp <laughs> Right. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. So I want to, at this point, we got guys that are behind yeah. the camera. Oh, sure. She's got their own shot right now. And I give Isaac a, a chance if you want to have a sip of your coffee. Yeah. And uh, whoever wants to jump in, if you have a part. Yeah. I know I'm putting you on spot, then give you a heads up. Yeah. But you got a question to ask. No, um, listening to your stories, even you last night at our event, you know, it's, it's so much my, it's pretty so much my, I guess one of the things that naturally just sticks out with everything that you've said is how do you maintain mental strength even you just keep rolling? Like that's no joke. And so here's a question. You know, to be honest, it's like it's rehab, it's, it's grief, it's it's figuring out who you are. And all of that can just be my first experience of that one thing. And you have to experience all of that shit together. Yeah. And sometimes I just go, how did you pick up? I know, I know. A lot of tears. A lot of tears. A lot of pain. A lot of um, uh, just laying prostrate before the Lord and saying, I cannot do it, I cannot do it. Wow. And then somehow finding this trick to, to, I guess just to reaffirm his great love for me. And that's been the difference, you know, his great love for me, that um, I'm not doing it on my own and that no matter what anybody thinks or says or misgenders me or misunderstands me, it's, it's, Okay, because I know my father cares for me. Yeah. And um yeah, it just I know who he is on a very deep and personal level because um I remember one time I, I really, really cried and cried and I was at the verge of leaving the Teen Chunky program and I said, Father, I've had enough, you 
no. I came here to find solace and acceptance and you know the boys are you know teasing me thin and I had a bit of a meltdown. And I went and I cried under this um, this uh big maple tree. Crying and crying and crying with a pine tree, not a maple tree. And it was I cried so much that I had to take my T shirt off and wring it and it was wet. It was wow. Wet, right? And it was the first time I mean, well, one of the many times that the Lord spoke to me, but the the moment that he spoke to me, we were really like not what I expected. So I'm crying, I'm crying and saying, Right, I'm gonna leave, I've had enough. And the Lord spoke to me and <laughs> do you know what he said to me? It's crazy. He said, Where is your faith? Wow. And I was like, What? <laughs> You're asking me in the middle of my meltdown, where is my faith? And I just yelled out to him, There's nobody was hearing me. I think the boys were all looking for me. Yeah. Um, what? And he said where is your faith? And I said, well, what faith? Well, exactly, right? What faith? And um, and I, 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 that was not something I wanted to hear, but I heard it. Wow. And then he says, do you love me? The Holy Spirit said to me, do you love me? Wow. And I told him, I was still swearing. I said, of course I effing love you. Why do you think I'm here? You know, <laughs> why do you think I'm here? Why do you think I've even changed my whole epic life? Yeah, yeah. Really, really cursing at him. And I'm so angry because I felt like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear you stay on your pool. Right, yeah. Pool. Run off and be a girl again. But but it was like he helped me to grow up and, and, and just accept that this was my cross to bear. Um, right. But he was there to carry that cross with me. And when I... Or he would put me so that is really what why I've been able to endure what I've been doing it's been all about him wow not been about me at all yeah and it's really helped me grow up and mature and I see that now in every aspect of my life you know I don't get so overwhelmed right. with um, the challenges that I face and will continue to face going forward um even right now, yep. like talking in front of a camera, and I'm thinking, I had at this dream like many years ago that I would be doing this, but right. it was something that I wanted to shy away from. I didn't want to yeah. feel like I was exposed all over again, right. you know. So yeah, it's been it's been my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has Terry there with me. Yeah, yeah, you're there. That's amazing. Yeah. I wanted to, because we're going to we'll wrap up. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, because, of course, I know you. I've seen and, you know, see everything going on in the world with, you know, yeah. basically everywhere you look, uh, different governments or culture is trying to get kids on hormones. Yeah. As early as five, six, yeah. like young kids, very prepubescent kids and, yeah. you know it's a whole movement across the world right and and from your experience and your life and everything that you've been through and what God has done in your life I want to hear from you like what would you say to either a parent or a young person who either has you know you know people are kind of shying away from this term now but gender dysphoria or or is confused feeling like they're in the wrong body yeah. and and is now considering maybe I should transition you know or maybe I should get surgery maybe I should just go ahead so I feel like I'm at home in my own body yeah. what would you say to that well immediately I would say that it is a lie wow because that's how I came to the realization Holy Spirit again spoke to me wow in a vision it's a lie. Everything that you've believed about yourself, everything that has been said about you, every affirmation you've had about your sexuality, and um, people will try to make you feel um, comfortable in your role just to appease your own ego. Yes. Um, it's a lie. Everything, it's a lie. That right. person that I was um, was uh, not who God created me to be. Wow. So, and, and it's a harsh reality to face. Right, right. But it's the truth, and, and, and it yeah. set me free. Because, you know, I want to emphasize this to anyone watching. Yeah. Nothing, 
no question I've asked, I asked lightly, and I don't think anything that you've said, it, no one here is saying it's easy. It's like the opposite. Your life, everything you've been through is like, oh my God, it's so hard. <laughs> you know? It's not like saying, oh, just follow Jesus and everything's going to work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard, right? It's, it's hard. been hard. Like hearing your story is like, oh my God, my life has been so easy. But it's if it's true, then it's true. And, and so, you yeah. know, uh, you know, before we end, want to ask you no question set up or anything. Is there anything that you'd just like to add as, as we close the conversation? Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, sure. I, I, I would like to say if anybody's going through any um, confusion Ooh. with their gender, with, their, with, with, with anything in life that seems to be overwhelming or uh, controlling your whole world, um, Jesus actually if you put your trust in him if you truly truly want to change your life or allow the Holy Spirit to come in and change it with you and for you it's well worth the journey well wow. yeah it's like a progression and it's not easy but it's a narrow path and right. if you stay on that narrow path you'll never ever because eternity awaits you and I'm so happy. I can't wait for the Lord to come and yeah. collect me and say, yeah. I, it's time to go. I can't wait. I live for that day. Um, but yeah, he's, everything means everything to me. Yeah. And um, you you won't regret it. You won't regret it. Wow. Yeah. Through all the pain, through all the, the changes, it's well worth the journey. So, you know, go for it. Give your life to Jesus and trust him with the rest what I'd say that's awesome yeah thank you <laughs> thank you okay everyone I... watching thank you so much for taking the time uh, again Isaac mm -hmm. thanks for hanging out and oh, talking gosh. thanks for being so real yeah. and so I encourage everyone watching this video whenever you're watching it take time go through it um, share it with people uh, the point is not to make this video famous but to make Jesus famous and to help people that's that's really the point so if you know anyone maybe you're you've been going through confusion or maybe you know someone or maybe just been asking questions about everything going on in the world and whatever it might be i hope that the, this conversation will help you or help inspire someone and lead someone to jesus in some way and so thank you guys for watching again isaac love you brother thank, thank you so much for the time we'll see you guys around Bye. thank you Jesus.